This new solar panel was just released by Bouge RV. This is a 100 watt flexible solar panel using monocrystalline half cut cells and 10 bus bars all the way across the cell which this is the first I've seen in a flexible solar panel which normally you would see this in higher end solar panels. This is the most flexible fiberglass solar panel I have ever seen and it gives you lots of mounting options of up to 270 degrees which I've never really needed to do that but you can. Most flexible solar panels tend to be quite a bit larger than a rigid solar panel so I was pretty surprised to see this one was almost identical to the one I was comparing. When it comes to weight there's no doubt flexible solar panels are much lighter. This comes in only at 4 pounds versus a rigid panel is about 8.5 to 9 pounds depending on brand. Bouge RV solar panel is ultra thin, only about the thickness of a nickel, which is about 2 millimeters thick when measuring this with a caliper. This solar panel is also coated with ETFE, which is much better than a PET panel, so it should last a lot longer. And with two layers of fiberglass, this helps with strength and also heat dissipation for better output numbers. And with the ETFE coating, this should provide years of service in all kinds of weather conditions. Bouge RV is also one of the only manufacturers to give you a manual with warranty information and output numbers but you can also find that on the front of the solar panel which the maximum power for this is 100 watts give or take and also you can put these in series up to 1000 volts DC. The solar panel also has a waterproof junction box with an o-ring seal and a potting material covering all connections. It also uses a 2.5 or 14 gauge wire utilizing MC4 connectors. Okay, so test time. We're going to do this rigid panel first just to compare and get some numbers. Now today there is a decent amount of high clouds in the sky, very light haze, but the clouds will be giving us some different numbers. I did make sure that each panel was at least getting 1080 or more watts meter square. That way the light coming in would be about the same. And I will normally see about 94 to 98 watts out of this rigid panel, which this one does pretty well for the most part. Now I did let each solar panel sit out in the sun for about 10 minutes that way they could heat soak because a cold panel will put out more power than a warm panel. And again checking with our light meter still getting about 1080 watts meter square so we'll see what our numbers are. Okay and look at that 96 watts. Wow that's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. I figured upper 80s because that's kind of normal out of a flexible 100 watt panel but just to show you that's the, the bouge. So come back down again. And 94, 93. Oh, actually, we do have a cloud. It is passing up there, and you can see it just a little bit, which ah, blinded myself is what I did. But you can kind of see the cloud up there. Can I take a look again? And yeah, 95. That's really good, actually. I was kind of surprised. And, and again, this has been out here soaking in the sun for, well, maybe 15 minutes now. So it should be plenty warmed up, but I'll give it a couple more minutes, and we'll see if it heats up a little bit more to get kind of more of a steady number. Okay, so this has really been holding about 93, 94 now that I've given it another oh, seven minutes or so. Okay, shade test time. Our shade will be enacted by that chair right there. And just to get some baseline numbers, take a look again because we do have more high clouds. And if you guys do like this video, smash that like button for me. But here we're going to do just a little bit of shade. Man, got a good cut down on numbers, 55. Get the bottom three cells. Now we're 27, so big hit. And there's about a quarter of the panel getting 11 watts. Now we'll take a look at half of the panel roughly. This should probably go to zero which actually we're still getting 11 watts. I like to do ambient lighting versus just putting a board across it. So now if I had a board across this, it would be zero, but with ambient light, I still get 10 watts. And now with fully shaded, this should bring us to zero. Actually, seven watts still. That's actually pretty good for a flexible panel, kind of surprised. And now we're fully shaded and blocked off, so should be zero. And there we are, but overall did very good in the shade test. And I've been using this little power station just to kind of get my results because with my meters, it's almost exactly the same. So it works pretty good. All right, well, you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think because this actually performed much better than I thought it was going to. Most of the time, these panels, you get about 85, 90 watts at best out of a flexible panel. But with technology, obviously everything gets better. And honestly, these performed, or this one performed a lot better than well, some flexible panels that I just installed on my RV. So, but like with anything, you know, six months later, a new iPhone comes out, a new truck, whatever it is, they're just going to be better as technology gets better. So 
And at about $120 after the discount, this is actually not a bad buy considering it's the same size as a rigid panel and it's about the same price as some of the premium rigid panels. It's definitely something to consider if you're looking at a flexible panel. Now rigid panels are definitely going to be better in the long run. They're always going to perform better, but this is just adding another option to the build or whatever it is the project that you're working on. So you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. There is a link down below called Ask Me if you have any questions. I hope you like the video and I hope to see you next time.